Welcome back. It's your boy Carcino here, and let's talk about it. Now, for many weeks, many days, you have seen a lot of different things happen on social media and the internet. And it is a very tough job to be on top of all of it, but we do our best. So I want to thank you guys for your patience and your, your support, your love, everything you guys do. You guys don't have to click my videos. There's plenty of other videos to click on, and you guys choose mine. So I try to give you the very best I can. Um, and doing that, so I seem to be harming relationships with women. So she'll, she'll get over it, you know, and I told her, look. My public need my videos. Just spent four hours with you. Four. That is very, very large amount of time to me. I got to get back. Can't you just go live? No. <laughs> I need to get back. Because I want to premiere it to the world. Now, here's the thing. When I premiere the video, it seems to be getting the notification across better. Now, if you like the premiere better, and you guys are the first ones to see it, let me know in the live chat box. Do you like the premiere? Uh, yes or no? That's all I need to hear. Yes or no. I don't have time to read paragraphs. Yes or no. All right. Now, let's get to why we're here. <laughs> Dave Chappelle. Sticks and stones. The latest Netflix special by Dave Chappelle. Dave had done three. Had three shows put up on Netflix. And they only got better. The first one was, eh. The second was funny. The third one was, oh my goodness. And then came Sticks and Stones. Sticks and Stones was epic. It was vintage day. Because Dave Chappelle is so doggone good that even on a show in which he is bombing or is light, there's still some great humor in it. But on this one, he was on point. It's like he watched every Carcino for Life video that has come out and found my statements on every single issue and has put that out to the world. I just did an interview talking about what just happened before I even seen it. The interview I did a sit down that's coming out is about an hour long interview. You're going to see it in its entirety, hopefully. Uh, on the laugh at, what's it, the laugh, the last at first sight, I think it is, laugh at first sight. Um, YouTube page with Jason Cross. You are going to see that interview and say, wow, Carcino said that. And this is before I even seen any Netflix special. As I bring up an incident with Kevin Smith and his brother, I bring it up during that talk and how the LBGTC, whatever the word they called, How that alphabet group went after him when they knew this guy is not trying to harm us in any type of way. But they still made him pay money. You know, and that's just like, that's crazy. The man has an openly gay brother. <coughs> who he respects and loves and would never do anything disrespectful to the community. But they saw opportunity to extort some money, and that's what they chose to do.
any organization that does something like that, I'm going to always have reservations about. Now, Dave talked about the Michael Jackson incident. And Michael Jackson's accusers were upset. And everyone was putting up all this outrage. And I'm here to tell you right now. There was no outrage. People weren't outraged until they were told to be outraged. This is great marketing by Netflix. All of this is a hoax. They sold this thing to get people to watch it by telling people how controversial it was. People in the chat room, their marketing people were not putting Netflix name into it. Then next thing you know, the accusers of Michael Jackson come out like, I can't believe this. There's inconsistencies in y'all's story. From the jump, we knew you were lying. I never believed you. Put out a documentary. That's what I told HBO has lost my whole subscription because of it. Not going to pay you and you doing this. Putting out trash. Like he says, a sick documentary and it, I never watched it. Never watched it. Once they told me there's no one in the video except for one nanny who was fired, or one helper who was fired, and two people who have been proven in court to be liars twice who actually went to defense of Michael Jackson before. Certified liars. One who was in a relationship with Michael Jackson's niece Like a real relationship. They were dating since kids. None of the dates are matching up. At all. Because none of it adds up. It's ridiculous. The world is going insane. The world is completely going insane. Sorry, I just had to take a swig of water. And all the stuff that he talks about a lot on all of his broadcasts is how they are targeting comedians. They've targeted Louis C.K. Then they got Kevin Hart. He brought that up. Because he seems to always bring that up because he's always a target. And how the communities are going after him for being against them. All these different groups. If you don't like it, don't listen to it. They're called jokes. They're comedians. They say the most outlandish things because to some people they're funny. People don't take these as like literal and go out because the comedian said something. It was the end all be all of everything. No, no one does that. It's not done that way. completely not done that way people listen to it as jokes and then in the 80s and 90s this went down you had tough and lewd guys out there you had your Andrew Dice Clays you had all these guys were they rude and offensive like yeah but they were funny at the end of the day, isn't that what you're paying your money to see? Somebody to make you laugh. You didn't come there for social conscious. 
come here from my social consciousness. My social consciousness needs this. I'll be like, that's not politically correct. He can't say that. And he said something I've said before. Can't say the word faggot, but you can say the N-word all day. I just got through watching a movie, Teen Wolf, in which they throw this word around. He was getting ready to tell his buddy Styles he was a wolf. Styles is like, don't tell me you're a faggot. No, I'm not a faggot. Once he said this, who made the rule? Where was the meeting held that they banned this word? <laughs> They've turned this word that just used to mean unmanly in the dictionary. A person who is acting unmanly. What's the definition of the word? They've turned that to be a word that you cannot say on television anymore and it is completely banned. But the N-word can still fly. Then we have silly Negroes who tried to have a funeral for the N-word and bury it in the ground. Real people did this. <laughs> Probably have video of it. Not everybody walks around and uses the N-word. There was a time that they called each other brothers and sisters. In the 80s and the 90s. Then it became the N word, N word, N word. Like crazy once it started flying around in hip hop. Once NWA came out. Yes, I'm crediting NWA for everybody using the N word. Yes. Sorry. Because after that, it was rapid. Rapid. So you West Coasters, <laughs> gangster rappers, you screwed us all. Dr. Dre's Chronic album came out. Turned everybody to potheads. Serious. It's not a joke. They turn the pot heads. <laughs> Every single one of them. It's like they took a test and it came out pothead. <laughs> pot to the head. Now they argue over what kind of weed they smoke. They were just glad back then if they was smoking weed. Like, look, I'm smoking weed. Now they be, dude, this ain't Bubba Kush. I asked for a Hawaiian Bubba Yubba. This ain't Hawaiian Bubba Yubba. I'll take that back. They want stuff flown in from countries they have never been to in their life. What kind of new junkies are these? <clears throat> now Dave Chappelle's a good guy he's like that light skinned guy that walks into a room where it is a bunch of jet black people and all white people from Europe and he walks into the room and he doesn't know where he should stand or where to stand. He was like, he should stand with the brothers. They don't want him. They want him. They don't trust him. And that's exactly where people are. They own the fence. People like Dave because he's funny. But no, really, brothers trust him. And... I thought that was the most honest Dave Chappelle you ever gonna see in your life.
because that's his. I already got my money. I'm cool. I could sit down for a couple of years. I have made a lot of millions of dollars <laughs> where I could chill and step away from comedy for a few years and come back and still have the impact because I'm Dave Chappelle. Chappelle show put me in this spot. Now, what others don't realize is comedians are mostly broke. They travel, do shows, get their little money, go city to city, some of them on a bus, some of them in a raggedy van, but they go to these shows with the hopes of one thing. One thing. Getting that break. That break in Hollywood. That break in a film. That break in a movie. That's what they want. A lot of people say, you should be a comedian. I don't think I'm funny. <laughs> I just tell the truth and people laugh. That's it. Somebody said you should do a stand up. I'm like, I think I would do a stand up and I don't know how good it would be because I don't know. All I'm going to go out there and do is tell people the truth. And the truth is sometimes just funny. And that's what it is with Dave Chappelle. The truth was funny. When he talked about Juicy Smollett, we laughed. And to show you how funny it was, you can't even put Juicy Smollett's name in a video of something that he's actually doing. And they will not, YouTube will not send that video nowhere. They try to submerge it down. Why is that? Hmm? You could say Juicy Smollett just bought a Subway sandwich. You would think he would stay away from Subway after all these years, but no, he went back to Subway. <laughs> Can't stay away from them 12 long. <laughs> oh, man. Now. Ah, where should I, what else did he talk about that I feel that you guys wanted to nail and go over? I think that the majority of people out there in general don't respect other people's opinions. You want them to conform to your opinion, but you're not listening to their opinions. That's a problem. That's a major problem. And a hypocrisy. It's like, that is hypocrisy at its best. That's like doing a debate with somebody and they say they point and you try to say, no, 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 no. And they never let you talk. It's like, well, then how the heck is this a debate if you're not hearing what in the world I'm saying? I had to get another swig of water. Had a long night last night. Long night. Now, Dave Chappelle was put in a very particularly dangerous spot. When his comedian buddy, Chris Rock, decided to host the Oscar in a very heated topic when the blacks were boycotting the Oscars. The brothers was making a stand to say, we're not watching the Oscars. We're not going to show our support to this system until some things change. So they were trying to see who was going to cross the picket line. And Dave Chappelle went there to support Chris Rock, him and Kevin Hart, because they felt we got to be there for Chris in this situation. 
It's a tough situation for Chris. Chris don't want to let Adam Sandler down. He don't want to let down his new friends of Jerry and Adam. Can't let his fellow comedian brothers down who got him this position and told him, like Seinfeld, hey, I know, it's a tough situation, Chris, but these are the type of decisions that are not made every day. They're not looking to grab another black guy to host the, the Oscars. This is it. This is the big moment, Chris. Are you going to step away? Are you going to accept the challenge? <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. So, he ended up doing it. And accepting the role, didn't step back, and did it. Kevin Hart showed integrity and said, I'm not going to do it, and then apologized right after. I thought that was the bravest thing Chappelle said because of his friendship with Kevin Hart. Because it was not only the truth, not only the truth, it was actually accurate and funny. How are you going to say, I'm not going to host the Oscars, which was my dream all these years to host the Oscars, and I'm not going to apologize after I've apologized again. Brothers stood up with Kevin Hart. We definitely stood up with Kevin Hart. I'm like, I'm going to go watch his special again. Give him another click. He getting another hit off me. I'm going to go buy his book. And buy Kevin Hart's book, by the way. It is Definitely funny. Definitely funny. The very first 10 pages is funny. Talking about his life. Now, as we journey down this road, let's, let's even get any deeper. Let's get deeper. Let's get skin deeper. Right? Kevin Hart then proceeded to go on talk shows and basically apologize again, again, and again. And I'm like, why are you doing that? You just said you weren't going to do that. You know why he did that? It's because Kevin Hart didn't lose anything, did he? <laughs> Kevin Hart still is Kevin Hart. He still got specials. He's still getting money on Netflix. He said, why am I putting my movies out in the movie theater? When I could just put them on Netflix <laughs> and get money directly. Movie theaters are dead for comedy now. This is where the gold is. This is where the honey pot is, Winnie the Pooh. Oh, Pooh loves honey. Now, Kevin Hart's in every big movie coming out. You see him with The Rock. You see him doing other things with, with other artists that's coming out where he's trying to be serious. Doing a movie with Brian Cranston in the wheelchair, the upside. He's trying to show some range. And I respect that from Kevin. But this is the first time that Kevin Hart has really slowed down. Sometimes you got to take that slow down because if you do that and do the rock path, you over, you exhaust the public. <laughs> the rock was putting out like 15 movies a year. You're like, I thought the, this movie just came out. No, that was the other one. This is another one. The rock had about three movies out with him in it at the same time. It was like, what just happened here? It's like, oh no, that was, I'm like, he was in the forest in like three straight movies. I'm like, is this Jumanji or... No, it's Rampage. He's in the jungle with a big ape. I thought this is Jumanji. <laughs> you don't know what movie you're watching with The Rock. The man over-exhausts you with movies. 
as they show you go to see his movies, they're showing you previews of three Mo Rock movies coming out. You go, damn, this is a. Didn't they just do this, Jumanji? They bringing it back out again? It's a sequel. Damn. Then, The Rock is headed into the superhero universe, the DC universe. He's Black Adam. That's right. Can you smell what the Black Adam is cooking? <laughs> Rock want to be Black Adam now. He, and Rock, he don't realize I appreciate the work ethic. But you taking brother's jobs. <laughs> Let some brothers get some, the brother be like, man, I can't get no screen time. <laughs> Rock take it all of them. Some of these brothers get their light. Now. As we bring this to a close, don't forget, guys, donate to the page, hit the Cash App up. The name's Carcino on the Cash App. Um, or you can click that Streamlab button because we're going to go live on Streamlab and show appreciation to those guys who've been donating in the Streamlab where you can leave me longer messages and get back up with me. I appreciate your support. I'm out.